the symbolism of the giraffe and the constellation Camelopardus. The giraffe is a large African hoofed mammal belonging to the genus Giraffa. It is the tallest living terrestrial animal and the largest ruminant on earth. The giraffe's chief distinguishing characteristics are its extremely long neck and legs and its spotted coat pattern. Giraffes usually inhabit savannas and woodlands. Their food sources leaves, fruits and flowers of woody plants, primarily acacia species, which they browse at heights most other herbivores cannot reach. The giraffe has intrigued various ancient and modern cultures for its peculiar appearance and has often been featured in paintings, books and cartoons. And symbolically, the giraffe has represented sociability and friendliness. Femininity, especially because of those huge eyes and long lashes. Fragility, because its legs and neck look so thin and vulnerable. And grace beauty and elegance. But which of these is accurate, if any? It's a burning giraffe. Many thousands of years ago, giraffe were common. Vast herds roamed throughout the whole of Africa and in southern Europe and India. Today, desertification, the increase in global population and appalling levels of hunting for sport have reduced their range to national parks in east and southern Africa. As a consequence, the giraffe is classified by the International Union for Conservation of Nature as vulnerable to extinction. Estimates as of 2016 indicate there are only around 97,500 members of giraffe in the wild. The International Fund for Animal Welfare's more recent figures say 68,000. Salvador Dali depicted them with burning manes in a great number of his surrealist paintings, drawings and lithographs. Dali's giraffes were clearly symbolic, but of what? Often appearing in desertified landscapes, they were a premonition of global warming and extinction. And he even explained the very thing that was destroying them although few even today understand this, a masculine, cosmic, apocalyptic monster, man. Why Camelo Pardalus? The giraffe's species name is Camelo Pardalus or Camelopard. Its name is derived from its early Roman Greek names, where it was thought of as a composite creature, a camel marked like a leopard. The word giraffe, however, is from the Arabic, zarafa. The giraffe, however, is actually a two-toed ruminant, 
and thus shares its physiology with cows, deer and the camels, but not leopards. Its strange appearance, however, has always caused great interest. In 1414, a giraffe from Malindi was taken to China by explorer Zheng He and placed in a Ming Dynasty zoo where it was a source of fascination. The Medici giraffe was a giraffe presented to Lorenzo de Medici in 1486 and it caused a great stir on its arrival in Florence. And in 1827, the first giraffe ever seen in France became an instant celebrity in Paris. Michael Allen Zarafa. Zarafamania gripped Paris and crowds rioted around her as she was paraded through the city and presented to the king. Women imitated her with their hairstyles high, a la giraffe, and the men wore fashionably giraffic hats and ties. As such, its exotic nature added to its mystique and its reputation for reaching for the sky to reach the topmost branches linked it to the spiritual path and the tree of life. Hallucinogen The Huma are a subgroup of the Bagara ethnic group, native to Kurdifan in East Sudan. Ian Cunison, shown in the centre of the front row, was an anthropologist who studied the Huma people. The Huma, he found, consume a drink called Um Nayoloch, which is prepared from the liver and bone marrow of freshly killed giraffes. He reported that after drinking it, dreams of giraffes are commonly reported. Waking hallucinations experienced under the influence of the drink also typically involve giraffes. Giraffes eat acacia, and some acacia contain DMT. Richard Rugely thus hypothesized that Um Nyalok might contain DMT and hallucinogen. As a consequence. Despite the fact that Humur being Mahdis are strict abstainers and never drink liquor or beer, Cunison reported that it is said that a person once he has drunk Um Nyalach will return to giraffe again and again. The Watchtower A giraffe, the tallest animal, oversees a local vicinity on the African plains or savanna. Other animals on the savanna, such as zebras, ostriches and antelopes, stay close to giraffes and use them as watchtowers or observation posts for predators. Giraffes have good eyesight, meaning their height and eyes enable them to see miles. In essence, they are far seeing. And someone who is symbolically far seeing is called a seer. The giraffe's symbolism is reinforced by its horn like Aussie cones. See our video, The Symbolism of Horns. It's aerial. It is worth noting that although lions, leopards, spotted hyenas, and African wild dogs may all prey upon giraffes, a giraffe can kill a lion with a brutal kick, so it may be a seer symbolically, but it is neither fragile nor passive when attacked. But the overall symbolism is beginning to emerge very clearly, an animal that reaches to the highest heavens, a courageous and brave seer willing to defend her group. indeed a sort of high priestess of the animal world and this is the high priestess card from the Thoth Tarot which we will come back to shortly.
an animal with a remarkable heart. People could not understand how the giraffe, nature's skyscraper, could allow its head to drink and not suffer from dizziness. Why doesn't the high pressure of the blood gushing six foot to its head, followed by the low pressure when it raises it way back up again, make the animal dizzy or faint? And then they discovered the extraordinary design of the jugular blood vessels in its neck, where a series of one-way check valves hold back the blood from flowing to the brain when it lowers its head, and vice versa, stop it running away when it raises its head. Equally marvellous is the fact the blood does not pool in the legs, and a giraffe does not bleed profusely if cut on the leg. The secret here lies in an extremely tough skin and an inner fascia that prevents blood pooling. Furthermore, a giraffe has an enormous heart, one of the largest hearts in the animal kingdom, to enable it to do these things. So she has been designed to be a miracle of engineering, the high priestess of the animal world, but a high priestess with a huge heart. Sadly, the same cannot be said for her killers. Constellation Camello Pardalus Camello Pardalus is a large but faint constellation of the northern sky. The Flemish clergyman, astronomer and cartographer Petrus Plontius, when employed by the Dutch East English Company, introduced the constellation in 1613. And so it has remained, recognised by the International Astronomical Union to this day. The picture of this constellation has a long neck extending to the North Pole and its head is very close to the Pole Star. Johan Ellert Bode showed some of the constellations bordering Camello Bardalus. Auriga, Lynx, Telescopium, Herschelli and Perseus whilst Johannes Hevelius showed the other constellations Draco, Cepheus, Cassiopeia, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor and if you follow Ursa Minor's tail its tip is the pole star. In summary Both the giraffe and its constellation symbol represent the High Priestess, and this is the card from the Thoth Tarot again, a deck painted by Lady Frieda Harris according to instructions from Alistair Crowley. We have a video on the symbolism of the High Priestess in the Tarot. The High Priestess and giraffe is a seer of great courage and bravery and one who protects her group, reaching for the very centre of the cosmic egg, the pole star, her head almost touches it. And then there is the link with the acacia tree, an African tree of life. And the pattern? Does this have any symbolic significance? Celestially, the giraffe's head looks out over nearly every northern constellation. And what does it see? A pattern, just like its own.